good evening friends respected chairpersons my co speakers and friends it is indeed a great pleasure for being with you i am thankful to dr bansi and his team and i congratulate them for the grand success of this diacarcon today's my topic is strategies for improving pregnancy outcome in women having hyperglycemia the hyperglycemia in pregnancy in women between 20 to 49 years of age by idf region you can see from 9.5% to 26.6% especially this is southeast asia one of the highest prevalence of hyperglycemia in pregnancy and the most important thing is one in six live births occur in women with some form of hyperglycemia and out of this 84% of which are due to gdm i'll be covering more gdm rather than type 2 and pre existing type 1 diabetes because my previous speakers have already mentioned about that part what could be the best outcome for short term no neonatal uh, complications and or parameters appropriate for gestational age and the most important is on the long term outcome prevention of ncd in mother as well as her offspring unfortunately the adverse outcomes for the fetus are still very common despite significant advances in glycemic control for pre existing type 4 and type 2 diabetes in gdm despite standard treatment large for gestational age still occurs now what is the pathogenesis of hyperglycemia in pregnancy and its consequences most important is due to maternal hyperglycemia the glucose crosses the placental barrier and as a result there is a increased fetal glucose and then in turn increased fetal insulin and this leads to changes in pancreas muscle fat blood vessels liver as well as heart and possibly these probably these changes may lead to overweight type 2 diabetes insulin resistance blood pressure and declining cognitive functions in adult life most important is these changes are preventable if you look at the implications according to risk and prevention of type 2 diabetes in women and with gestational diabetes women with history of gdm are at increased risk of future diabetes predominantly in type 2 diabetes as are their children trans generation transmission occurs and the most important is gdm may play a crucial role in increasing prevalence of diabetes and obesity nicely covered by dr sharma effect of maternal fuels on fetal and offspring development the hyperglycemia in pregnancy leads to um, uh, due to deficiency in insulin and as a result there is a increase in plasma glucose amino acids and lipids in the mother this crosses the placental barrier and as a result there is a increase mix nutrients in the fetus leading to increase insulin and then macrosomia in neonat it may lead to hypoglycemia and other complications in adult life in male as well as female it will lead to obesity and in male igt and female gdm and this both leads to diabetes in later life most important is this hyperglycemia during pregnancy again this leads to gdm and diabetes in later life so this diabetes begets diabetes you are what your mother ate if you look at the maternal fuels it has impact on child adolescent as well as adult life a very good study in utero exposure to maternal hyperglycemia increases the childhood cardiometabolic risk in offspring and the maternal hyperglycemia in pregnancy is independently associated with offspring's risk of abnormal glucose tolerance obesity and higher blood pressure at years of 
the cardiometabolic risk continue to increase throughout the adolescence into the adulthood. In adolescent offspring of women with GDM show increased adiposity and adverse cardiometabolic profile in the earlier onset of puberty among girls, and increased fasting plasma glucose and HOMA IR levels among the offspring of mothers with uh, GDM may be explained by this programming effect of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. In adulthood, GDM led to chronic insulin resistance, beta cell failure, dyslipidemia, inflammation, and endothelial dysfunction. As a result, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and metabolic syndrome. This Professor V. Sheshai, considered as a fatherly figure in GDM, recently has been awarded Padma Shri for the same. His work on GDM and pregnancy, uh, hyperglycemia and pregnancy, he says GDM is the mother of NCDs. Now, what could be the strategies? Strategies for improving pregnancy outcome in women having hyperglycemia. Strategy one, universal testing. According to International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Groups, universal early testing in population with high prevalence of type 2 diabetes. Indian women have increased fold, 11 fold increase risk of developing glucose intolerance during pregnancy compared to Caucasian women. And among ethnic groups in South Asian countries, Indian women have the highest frequency of GDM. And according to United States Prevention Service Task Force, they recommend all women should be screened for gestational diabetes even if they are having no symptoms. In the year 2018, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, they published the guideline for diagnosis and management of GDM. But before that, Dr. Shesha, he published an article in GMA regarding GDM Indian guidelines. According to him, because there are a lot many controversies going on regarding the screening test versus diagnostic test, first one step, two step, fasting, non-fasting, 50, 75, 100 gram glucose. So he simplified a single step procedure with single glucose value. 75 gram glucose is given to the pregnant lady irrespective of their fasting condition. And after two hours, if glucose level is more than 140, then it is considered as hyperglycemia. And that's this single step procedure to diagnose abnormal glucose tolerance in pregnancy is rational, cost effective and causes negligible inconvenience to the expected mothers. I will not go in details of this methodology. The important part is, again, International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Group, they said in future clinical practice, simpler, more cost-effective strategies that do not require performing an OGT in most pregnant women may be developed. Till then, this single step procedure, which is make in India, is the best we should not let the base come in the way of good. Again, WHO recommended in the year 2013 this single step procedure. In 2017, FIGO, that is Federation of uh, International Gynecology and Obstetrics, they also recommend all pregnant women attending health facilities will be tested for hyperglycemia using a single step procedure. Strategy two, the ideal week for screening. The usual recommendation is 24 to 28 weeks, but early screening for glucose intolerance and care could avoid some diabetes related complications such as hydramnios, fetal anomalies, and preterm births in women with gestational diabetes. A very good study conducted by Dr. V. Shesha, he says GDM manifests in all trimesters of pregnancy. Out of 4,151 pregnant women, 741, that is seven, around 18 percent, had two hour plasma glucose equal to or more than 140 milligram percent and identified as GDM. If you look at the prevalence of GDM in different trimester, out of 741, 121, that is around 16 percent. They had hyperglycemia detected before 16 weeks. 
166 uh, women, that is 22%, they detected hyperglycemia in week between 17 to 23 week. And rest 61%, they detected after 24 weeks. The most important part is, again out of this 121, six women, that is around 5% of this 16%, they had two hour plasma glucose, more than 200, that suggesting overt diabetes. Another good study by Dr. Sesha, they studied 11,000 women and they concluded that manifestation of GDM in the early weeks of gestation is common. If you look at out of all GDM diagnosis, 31%, 31.5% they detected in first trimester, 42.2% detected in second trimester and 25.3% detected in third trimesters. It is important to note that fetuses are exposed to increased amniotic fluid glucose before 12 weeks of gestation, uh, suggesting that metabolic per perpetrations are underway before diagnosis and that earlier screening and intervention may be warranted. Strategy 3, GDM management, lifestyle management, well-known medical nutrition therapy at least for two weeks in a women having GDM and along with the lifestyle modifications. Studies have suggested that GDM can be prevented by lifestyle intervention. The Finnish gestational diabetes prevention study, ADL, they concluded a moderate individualized lifestyle intervention reduced the incidence of GDM by 39% in high-risk pregnant women. These findings may have major health consequences for both mother as well as child. Another study, diet and exercise programs effective in preventing gestational diabetes. Pregnant women who participate in diet and exercise program had a greater gestational diabetes risk reduction and also had less weight gain and reduced number of births by caesarean section. The fourth strategy, the pharmacological therapy. Although majority of the cases could be controlled with diet and exercise, but still a considerable number of subjects end up requiring pharmacological therapy. Metformin, nicely called by Dr. Mathur, it has been now permitted for the use. But till date, insulin remains the safest choice for the treatment of GDM. And availability of insulin analog and continuous subcutaneous inf insulin infusion, that is CSII, for the management of hyperglycemia during pregnancy have improved both maternal as well as fetal outcome. The most important part is insulin is advised if fasting is more than 90 mg percent and two or post meal glucose more than 120 mg percent with medical nutrition therapy. If you look at the prevalence of diabetes during pregnancy in women according to their birth weight, which is, is very important, a very good follow up. If you look at over here, if the weight of that particular women during birth was between 2.5 to 3.5 kg, then chances of developing hyperglycemia in pregnancy was less. And if it was less than 2.5 kg or more than 4.5 kg, then the chances was very high. Therefore, the goal is to obtain newborn babies with birth weight appropriate for gestational age, a step to prevent offspring developing diabetes. The, if you look at the target blood glucose level, fasting should be between 80 to 90, PP should be between 110 to 120, and mean between 95 to 105 uh, milligram percent in order to achieve birth weight between 2.5 to 3.5 kg. Strategy 5, postpartum prevention of NCD in the mother. Again, it is advisable to screen lady postpartum at six weeks and six months and which test again the GDM diagnosed with the single step procedure same test can be utilized uh, for the screening for postpartum hyperglycemia and if you look at the 
this study, lifestyle modification study, step to prevent GDM2 diabetes, higher lactation intensity and longer duration, about 10 months, were independently associated with lower two-year risk incidence of diabetes after the GDM pregnancy. Another good study, low carbohydrate diet scores and long-term risk of type 2 diabetes among women with history of GDM, a prospective cohort study. They concluded among women with a history of GDM, a low carbohydrate dietary pattern, particularly with high protein and high fat intake, mainly from animal sources, is associated with a higher type 2 diabetes risk. Whereas with the animal or plant source foods, it is less significantly associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes. Strategy 6, postpartum prevention of NCD in her offspring. It actually starts with a healthy pregnancy. It has been observed that low birth weight and large for gestational age birth weight is associated with, in the adult life, elevated risk for obesity, diabetes, hypertension and CVD. And it has impact on intergenerational transfer of risk. So maternal health, the link to the NCD epidemic. Therefore, if you are looking to prevent NCD, preventive measures against NCD should start during intrauterine period and continue throughout the life from early childhood. GDM offers an important opportunity for the development of testing and implementation of clinical strategies for NCD prevention. The most important positive observation, GDMS is preventable, small as well as large gestational age uh, are preventable, offspring obesity is preventable, GDM to diabetes, type 2 diabetes uh, conversion is preventable. What we require is optimistic approach. It is Albert Einstein, most complicated problem in this universe has a simple solution. We have one test, 75 gram glucose of oral glucose in the fasting or non-fasting state. One value to diagnose GDM, two hour plasma glucose, more than 140. One target monitoring uh, two hour plasma glucose should be less than 120 milligram per cent. Again, Professor Sesia is a member of technical advisory group of GDM Ministry of Health and uh, uh, Government of India, the timely action taken now in screening all pregnant women for glucose intolerance, achieving euglycemia in them, and ensuring adequate nutrition may prevent in all probability the epidemic of diabetes and CVD. Thanks for attention.